We'll get to the EQ by pressing on the EQ light here. The EQ section is very, very straightforward. You've got four parametric bands. Um, you switch them on like this. And then you move them around like that. Switch them on. This is how you set the EQs. You could also use the um, um, the buttons here. So this is the frequency, which is changing. That's the the level. And this is the width of, of this area. I'll show you this, the width on, on another area here, for example. This is the width down there. This means it's fairly wide, which means that as soon as we um, change something, like we increase the gain by 3.5 at frequency 1, 1262 hertz but because we're using a very wide width it affects um, quite a quite a um, wide area whereas if we um, decrease the width it only affects them um, a lot a smaller area as you can see and then we can just take the frequency up or down either up here graphically or do it on the fader or we could change the gain see the gain is down to zero again see when I go up the gain increases when I go down the gain decreases. And let me show you the effects of the EQ on a sound that uses um, a wide frequency spectrum. And just one of those sounds is here on, the, on my bass sweep channel. This is the channel, a stereo channel. I'll go into the EQ section by pressing either one of those. Alright, let's switch on the EQ. in here for different frequency areas. Look, low gain, fairly narrow setting here now. Now I'm taking away the high frequencies. And now I'm getting rid of the lower frequencies. Now you can hear it, the lower frequencies are missing now. The levels are a lot lower as well. Now I'm taking away the mid frequencies, i.e. the low frequencies are back again. And so on. Now you've got two mid mid um, mid bands here which work exactly in the same way. And you've got a lower band and a higher band. Um, the low and the high bands have got the additional functions of using a low cut, which means as soon as you activate them, um, they work as a low cut. And you can then choose how strong you want the cut to be and um, where you want the cut to start from. Now this means that all the frequencies below 3800 Hz are being reduced by um, down to zero in, in sort of in octave steps somehow. As it says it's a cut so it tries to get rid of the frequencies completely. Even if you take it higher, it never actually works in an amplifying way. It always cuts the frequencies. That's the cut. And the opposite to that one, the opposite to that one is the shelf. So you hear everything from a certain frequency is being affected in a in a way that you determine. Like the shelf means that from this area onwards here, everything is affected, whereas if I take the shelf off, I get a normal curve again, like the um, two mid bands here. And the same applies to the high frequencies, just then the other way around. So if I do like um, a low cut here, switch on the high one, go for a high shelf, or a high cut. Not much is left from the original sound. Yeah, see the number four and one, they sort of cross over. And they cancel each other out. Very powerful stuff. Q 
section. And before we finish the um, EQ section completely, let's have a look at these four buttons down there. The reset button, as you can imagine, let's click on it, resets the EQ section, we're, we're back to normal again. And um, and down here you've got a little drop down menu, which brings up a few presets. The telephone preset, or the hum his removal, let's play the tracks as well while we're doing it. Um, these are some of my personal ones. Use the bass and telephone. Now you can make up your own presets. All you need to do is you um, you find a, a EQ section that you like. Okay, let's say this was my um, my great EQ curve. So I just um, do store preset 10. You, that's all you need to do. Really, so it's down there. Or if you wanted to, you could then just um, double click in the preset 10 area there and just give it a name. Call it um, smart curve. The telephone one, which you should have as well. Or the smart curve. And if you find... If you find another one that you like. Store, preset 11. Give it a name. It's got the not so smart curve. Not so smart. And then it's just down there. So you can set up all these presets for for different people that you work with. If you um, if you tend to work with the same singers all the time, then you could um, have presets for how these singers um, sound best. For example, whether those singers work in a, in a background context, like doing harmony stuff, or whether they're being used as a solo singer. Or, um, well, as I said, if you've got like, like lots of male singers, lots of female singers that you're working with, your own, your own presets for however you think that your voice sounds the best. And um, if you've got instruments, for example, bass guitar sounds or um, electric guitar sounds, distorted sounds, you could then set up a preset, like as we've done here, the not so smart, the smart curve, and use the same preset on a completely different channel. Let's say we go to the snare channel, go for EQ, and call up the not so smart curve, and then it's there again for you to use in, in all the different instruments and, and things like that. So there's plenty to, to get on with and play around with. And um, finally, a lot of people always ask me how to how to use the EQ in a proper way. What's the right way to do? Which frequencies should you increase, and which frequencies should you um, decrease to make the sound either smoother, better, or um, more exciting, or whatever? Um, I think at the end of the day, it's just a matter of listening to to the sound that you've got, and and you're just trying to go up and down in the spectrum here, and then sticking with whatever you think sounds the best. Um, one thing you have to be careful of is, um, if I go back into this sound here, if I switch these off, I mean, you've heard it before, I was playing around with the EQ section, and then um, I increased the, um, the low frequencies massively, and um, I went overboard, basically, it distorted, as it does now. See, it's clipping, and I have to be careful that it doesn't clip. Let's try this one. It still clips basically, so you just have to take these things down a little bit. Obviously, if you like this sound and um, it's clipping like this, then you could also just re reduce the the um, fade a little bit here. But then there's the other the other um, philosophy that goes um, put that one back to normal. Keep this one on zero all the time. And if you feel like you want to increase the bass sound, then what you ought to do is, in fact, lower the high frequency sounds, and then you get um, a bassy feel without the clipping. Which one you prefer is entirely up to you, to be honest. I think a lot of people do it in, in lots of different ways. Just play around with these things and get a feel for it and and, um, and just go with it. And, and music nowadays is kind of like extreme. I mean, you could get away with doing this if you like the sound of it clipping. 
so be it. I mean, it doesn't really matter whether it clips or not, really, to be honest. Obviously, if you're working for the Philharmonic Orchestra and um, you need to record somebody's violin, passage, bits, and you've got these kind of EQ settings, they'll fire you, basically. Okay. But if you like this kind of sound and you're working for a company, then um, just go with it.